Hi, I'm Catherine Scott. I'm the developer advocate for Open Robotics. And today I'm going to give you the third in our AutoWare lecture series about ROS2 and autonomous vehicles. Uh, this lesson is going to focus on the CLI interface uh, to ROS2, uh, CLI meaning command line interface, um, and walk you through basically how to build, run, and sort of debug and introspect deployed ROS2 systems. Um, previously, we had talked about how these systems are constructed, roughly, uh, in what parts make up a ROS system, sort of how the code all comes together. And this time we're going to not focus on code so much as just sort of getting you familiar with the command line so that you're ready to go in, in looking at systems that maybe someone else has constructed or taking some code that uh, someone's given you and picking it apart and understanding how it works. Um, if you haven't looked at the previous talks, I would go and, and do that because they'll give you a background, they'll make sure your system's set up. Um, I'm going to breeze through sort of uh, different ROS components and the last lecture should at least give you an idea of what those components do and how they're constructed. So without further ado, let me just sort of swap over my system and we'll get started and I'll start showing you how to, to get familiar with ROS2. All right, let's get started. So, ROS is, is, well, as its name says, Robot Operating System. Um, it's not an operating system, but I like to think of it a lot as basically like a Linux command line for robots. Um, that is to say, a lot of the runtime tools are just um, command line tools in, in the classical Linux Unix sense, and that uh, you can string them together in really interesting ways to do a lot of useful things. Um, if you recall from last time, um, you know, ROS has a ton of you has a huge set of API tools for building uh, ROS components. Um, it's also got a bunch of tooling for doing uh, cross-platform builds and uh, polyglot builds and, and so on. Um, today we're going to really focus on the runtime and this command line interface. Um, and what we're essentially going to be doing is and there's this thing called Turtle Sim, which is just very, very simple raw simulation. And we're going to pick it apart and figure out how it works and what it does using the command line tooling. And we're going to start kind of with like, well, there's this thing called Turtle Sim, and we'll start looking at it. And we'll start digging into how it functions, what it's doing, and what all those parts do look like. And we're, we're going to basically work sequentially through all the command line tools, basically looking at the help. Um, and the thing I want you to take away from all of this is, yeah, I wouldn't have to, I personally don't have to look at the help file for everything all the time. Um, but it's a really, really good way for you to learn how to do these things because it's kind of self-documented. And once you get sort of like the a toehold in the ROS2 and then help, and then there'll be a list of commands, and then you get one of those commands, and then you look at the, the parameters, and you call help on those, and learn how they work, you can basically step yourself through all of the ROS2 CLI interface and, and figure out how things are put together and, and how to do what you want to do. Um, the other thing worth noting um, is most of these commands follow just a really, really regular grammar. And you should get used to it. They all tap complete to help you out. So if you're not completely sure about what package you're using and stuff, you just hit tab. Just hit it once because if you hit a couple times it slows down, but hit tab once and it should pop up with something that makes sense. Um, if you screw up or you leave a command blank, uh, it should spit out help information to remind you what it's what you should be doing. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm going to recommend you fire up ADE. I'm not going to do this because I don't want you guys sitting here watching my machine take away and, and load all of the things that you're going to need. Um, the thing to pay attention here is that we're just using a default ADE setup. So you, you know, you fire up ADE. Um, and then what I'm su going to suggest you do is you, like, every single time, if you don't recall this from last time, it's super important that when you start up ROS, you always source op ROS dashing setup.bash so that you're telling your operating system that we're using this version of ROS and where all those handy data command line tools are. And then we're going to install um, two packages, two app packages. One is called ROS dashing turtle sim. Uh, the other is called ROS dashing RQT. And then I'm just going to say star there. Um, 
essentially what you're doing is you're installing this turtle sim that we're going to pick apart and a few GUI tools. Uh, this should work on any version of 18.04 and maybe you use 18.04 and anything in between. So it's not just an ADE thing, which is helpful. I'm also, I've also installed Biobu because that's the terminal manager I like. You can use whatever you, whatever you want. Cool. So let's, let's get started. So we're going to start with a world where we don't know anything. And I'm just going to say ROS2 help. And what's going to happen here on the right hand side, you're going to see a bunch of stuff. It says ROS2 help. Uh, ROS2 is expensive, extensible command line tool for ROS2. Um, and there's a bunch of commands. And if you recall from last time, some of these commands might look kind of familiar. So there's one for actions, one for services, one's for topics. Um, there's run. There's node for inspecting node. There's messages for message related commands. Um, so, so this gets you the start of your grammar. This is these are the nouns and the verbs um, for the grammar of ROS2. Um, so why don't we start by just picking a part. Oh, let's go to the next slide. Let's start with ROS2 run. Uh, so let's say ROS2 run dash dash help. All right, ROS2 run, package executable name. So basically you give it a package name, which is the name of a ROS package. You give it the executable in there and then some set of arguments to the executable. Um, so what's helpful about this is that we are going to use, you can use tab completions to get this done. So we can do ROS2 run and we're gonna find this turtle sim thing, which is turtle sim and tab complete works. Um, and what are we gonna start? We're gonna start turtle sim node. Tab completion there. Well, let's give it a shot. Let's do run. There we go. Uh, so, as you can see, I am now covered up by this little turtle guy, and he's just sitting there. Not really doing anything, it's just a turtle on the screen. So what we're gonna to do to make this a little bit more interesting um, is we're gonna create a new terminal, uh, we're gonna set up our bash file, and we're gonna get uh, our turtle moving around with another node. So in Biobo, I'm gonna press F2, and just even though I'm probably okay, we're also dashing, set up that bash, if in doubt, source the bash file. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this thing called um, draw square. And it's in the same package. And draw square, let's get this here. So ROS2 run turtle sim draw. There, it came up, tapped up. And we can see our little turtle is getting new goals to go to certain positions and move around. Pretty cool. All right, so um, we could just let this run. If we wanted to kill it, we could use Control C. Um, but uh, let's let's talk about first what's going on. Um, if you recall, we basically have Turtle Sim, uh, the the Turtle Node sort of thing over here, uh, running in one ROS node, and then we know that there's this other ROS node that's probably on the other side sending it commands and that's roughly how things are structured. And what we want to do is we want to figure out how this thing is all put together. Um, so what if we didn't know what was going on? Well the first thing I would do is I would open a new terminal and just for safety's sake and to hammer this home Why don't we start looking at, we, if you recall, that there is this node command. So why don't we do ROS2 node dash dash help, see what it says. 
All right, so ROS2 node is basically a tool that'll tell you uh, a bunch of stuff about nodes. So you can either list them or you can, as it says right here, so list output, I'll put a list of available nodes or info output information about a node. Um, so why don't we start by listing and seeing what's in our running ROS system right now. So ROS2 node list. Cool. Can we get any information by asking it for help? Hmm, not very much. But we may maybe say, let's see what happens when we do all. Oh, there's also a ROS daemon. Uh, okay, so we know that there are now two nodes. There's a draw square node and a turtle sim node. Uh, why don't we... And if we think about this, right, we basically have a node that's drawing a square, and we have the node, like we saw before, that is just the turtle. Uh, why don't we dig deeper in? Why don't we see what we can do with this info command? So why don't we say ROS2 node info dash dash help, and it says give it a node name. So node names uh, always have this slash in front of it because you got to remember this is kind of like a namespace. So why don't we look at turtle sim? Wow. Okay, so that's a lot of info. What do we? What can we see here? Um, so if you recall from last time, you know, generally our, our meat and potatoes of, of Ross is our publishers and subscribers. So we can see that the turtle sim subscribes to a turtle one command velocity and the colon here so it's basically uh, what is the topic name and then the message type so it subscribes to command velocity that has a message type of geometry messages messages twist and it publishes to turtle one color sensor turtle one pose um, a couple of actions and then it'll list here it lists all the services that we can do on this node as well and it's telling us what the messages are That's a lot of info all right so if you if you recall from last time um we have ross nodes and then these nodes basically communicate over ross topics um the analogy we made last time is that ROS topics are kind of similar to um, a pub sub bus. So if you worked with something like RabbitMQ or ZeroMQ or in hardware something more like Modbus, um, it's kind of like a ROS topic. Another analogy for sort of ROS messages would be Google Protobuf, right? So it's just the serialization format to, um, to move messages around. And that's what we're pushing through the pub sub bus. And they communicate, and so these um, publishers and subscribers, they each communicate over topics, and the topics have a message type, and we should be able to dig down there and, and see what's going on. So why don't we take a look at, if we recall from just doing ROS2 help, there's this ROS2 topic command. So when we do ROS2 topic dash dash help, and what do we have at our disposal? Well, we can see here um, various topic related subcommands. So the commands we have at our disposal are BW, uh, bandwidth, delay, echo, which outputs messages from the topic, hertz, prints the average publishing rate, info, prints information about a topic, lists, lists all available topics, and pub, publish a message to a topic. So that's a, a lot in this one command. Um, why don't we actually try running this and just see what topics we have. So ROS2 topic list. Okay, so we see that there are five different topics. There are parameter events, which I think of parameter changes. There's ROS out, which is just something you get for free. It's just a general ROS output. And we see that there are, for our turtle, there are three topics. There's the command velocity, the color sensor, and pose. Um, just for reference, I'm going to clue you in that 
pose here means the position of the turtle, or you know what it's doing, and the command velocity is the command that we're sending it. Um, and you can see here, one thing worth noting is that our turtle is in this namespace, right? So it's turtle one, and then there's all these topics under sort of tur turtle one. So it's it's sort of a namespace, it's kind of like a directory or a subdirectory. It's just there to keep things clean. So why don't we go dig into this topic? Um, the first thing we can do is we can echo a topic, which is just sort of this old school, echo is just the old school command for spit something out, put it on the screen. So why don't we take a look at what ROS topic echo says. So ROS2 topic echo. It says, oh, let's ask for help. So one thing here is you see I screwed up, right? So I, I didn't put the full command and it gave me this, um, I guess I should use this. It gave me a, a short help message. But if I do help, it gives me an actual long help message. It's a good thing to remember if you're if you're kind of struggling. It's it's going to give you a truncated message if you just screw up. But if you ask for help, it'll actually print out everything. Anyway, so Ross Topic Echo says uh, output messages from a topic, and basically you can say topic name or message type, and then there's a couple optional things like CSV, which is kind of handy. I'll put everything in a CSV format. Um, and there's also some tooling just for changing the length. But we'll, why don't we take a look at the command itself? So ROS2 topic echo, and we're going to do first the pose. So turtle one. Turtle one. And I tab that and it just seemed to work. And pose. Boom. Whoa. So we're getting a lot of data. Let's take a look at what's going on here. So we can see here, our turtle's been going around the circles for a little bit, and it's turning, and you can see the theta value as it's rotating changes, and then the position value changes as it's moving, and we kind of alternate between the two. So move, 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 rotate, rotate, rotate. Pretty cool. We can actually introspect into what's going on. So let's, um, let's kill this. You kill it with control C, just like any other program. So there's some cool little tricks with this. Um, if you're familiar with the pipe command in Linux, right, which is this um, greater than symbol, um, you can actually use this, the echo command to dump some of the stuff to file. So let's say our robot was running and we wanted to capture something for debugging. There's better ways of doing this, but I'm, I'm just making an example. Um, so you can actually do something like this, type it into a file. So like stuff.txt, we'll let it run for a second. We can actually then go and see this file so we can see how things are changing. You can see how this would be very, very handy for debugging. Um, and so you could also, the other cool thing is that it allow you to grep through all of this. Um, so we could do uh, right. So we can just see the theta, grab through it, and see the theta value actually changing. You can actually see here that this is the section where it wasn't rotating, and this is the section where it was rotating. Um, there's also this CSV command. Um, That's not what we want. So up, 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 um, dash, dash, CSV. Um, let's run for a second. Oops. Oh, I forgot my pipe operator. So we'll let this run. And then we can take a look at our file. You can see where this would be super handy too, right? So this is basically, I think, the XY position and, and angle, or XY position angle, and then maybe the relative velocities. So you can see we're getting a CSV file really, really quickly. 
Um, you can just either plot this super fast or like pull it into an IPython notebook and plot something. So if you're doing some sort of like work with dynamics, very, very handy. Okay. Um, so not only can you sort of get the data out by using Echo, um, you can also use it to sort of do some system performance checking and like understand um, the bandwidth constraints of your system. So, you know, this turtle seems very, very simple, but I've been in situations where you're um, working on a vehicle, right, and you have like a Veladon LiDAR and eight cameras and a bunch of stuff going on, and that's a a lot of data, right? You're, you're saturating basically your network connection and you want to understand how, you know, what sensor is doing what and how much data is moving around. So there's actually some tools on this topic echo that help you figure out how the topic is performing. So one of those is um, bandwidth. This is fairly new. So ROS2 topic um, bandwidth, that's just help. Um, and you just give it the topic and you can also give it a window size. We're not going to do that. So we're going to do turtle sim, uh, pose and see what happens. Cool. And we can see the turtle sim is using, um, 1.5 kilobytes of bandwidth per second, which is, which is pretty cool that we can just whip that out really quickly. Um, there's also Hertz, which just tells you how quickly it's it's um, publishing. So HZ, HZ, we can do this. Oops. And we can see that our turtle sim is publishing at just a little over 60 Hertz. And control C to kill that again. Um, the other thing that's cool is it actually gives you stats here over the, the window, which is quite helpful. Uh, so topic also has an info command. So we can do uh, ROS2 topic info turtle slash pose. And we can see that nothing is publishing and nothing is subscribing to that topic. Oh, that seemed weird because we were actually looking for Turtle 1. And Turtle 1 actually gives you a publisher account and a subscriber account of 1 and 1, respectively. Cool. Um, one other thing that might be helpful here um, is we've we've talked about messages and how um, or ROS topics and how ROS topics have messages and those messages have a type. Sometimes you want to understand what the message type is. So the way you can do that is, um, and I'm I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but you can actually do um, message show. So instead of doing topic, if we do ROS two message, I'm going to show you help here real quick. So ROS2 message, yeah, basically the commands you have are list package packages and show. Um, so if you have a topic that's publishing and you want to see what the messages are, you can do ROS2 message show. Turtle sim, right? Uh, what did I say over here? Message so turtle sim message pose. So what we can see here is that the um, pose message for turtle sim is made of a float 32 for the x, a float 32 for the y position, a float 32 for the theta position. And then two more float 32s for the linear and angular velocity. Okay, so why don't we um, why don't we try publishing to a ROS2 topic? 
Um, and so this is kind of handy. Sometimes when you have a, um, a raw system and you want to trigger an event, like you're debugging or you want to uh, issue a command to make something happen, you want to do it by publishing a certain message and the system will respond. Um, so if we take a look here <clears throat> at ROS2 topic, pub. ROS2 topic pub, QoS profile, QoS reliability, QoS durability. All right, let's get the long version. Wow, that's a really long version. Okay, so basically you have positional arguments of the topic name, the message type, and the values. And then you have a whole bunch of different arguments. You can change the rate, uh, you can change the print uh, regularity, you can do it just once. Really cool, you can actually change a bunch of QoS parameters, which is really, really helpful if you're trying to build a test that you maybe want to see what happens if I corrupt a data a little bit and see how the system responds. So why don't we try um, uh, publishing just once to the command velocity of our uh, turtle sim. Uh, so I'm going to grab this. We're just going to publish once and we're going to try to change the velocity of our little turtle. Should still be moving around. I'm going to move him over here for a second. Uh, so the syntax is a little, a little bit difficult. <clears throat> um, basically you have to give it the message type. You have to tell the command where to look for the message so it, it serializes it correctly. And then you have to give it the value. So I've got this all um, right here. So let's try publishing um, to the command velocity topic and see how it affects the simulation. Oh, you know what? I think our other, let's turn this off really quickly. So let's go back. Try this again. Aha! So you saw that it, it moved, right? So let's do this real quick. Uh, see, we, we moved our little turtle. I'll do it one more time. Uh, two. Whoop. So there, um, basically I've taken what we did, right, is I, I killed that node that was making the robot, or making the turtle go around in a square, and I replaced it with my own message to give it a position. Um, and we were able to move around like that, which is, as you can see, this is probably a pretty handy debugging tool. Um, let's... Let's just do it one more time. Very cool. Um, as I said before, there are the QoS settings here too, which is just massively helpful if you're um, trying to debug or create tests for things that are, um, you know, that kind of happen in the real world. All right. Um, so I went through and showed you just very, very basically um, how to do uh, topic inspection and node inspection via the command line. It's worth noting that um, there's tools for all of this. There's GUI tools for all of these if you if you want to get in there and kind of see what's going on. So the first one you should be aware of um, is RQT um, GUI. So why don't we go back? I'm going to do this really quickly. Just fire back up my draw square tutorial. And that's the other node. And I'm going to paste this in here and say RQT GUI. Did we not install? Uh, 
Let me make sure this is Ross 2 sudo apt install Ross. Cool. Well, so I just ins hopefully just installed it. I'm going to pause here and figure out what we did. Okay, that was kind of silly. So, it's not our QT GUI, it's our QT. <sighs> so you do this, right? And um, basically, if you go plugins, topics, topic monitor, uh, you can see here that we can see all of these topics that are publishing uh, like this. Mm -hmm. See how it's changing right here? Let's pull up our turtle. There's a little turtle guy. You can see rotate, 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 numbers changing. Straight, straight, straight. And here's our linear velocity. And you can see how this would be a super, if you had a bunch of things running on, a, on an autonomous vehicle, you can see how this would be kind of interesting if you wanted to like, I don't know, look at wheel encoder values or, or something like that. Uh, I'm gonna kill this guy. Um, similarly, in the, in the way that we sort of looked at the nodes here and, um, and also looked at uh, the topics, what we can do is we can pull up, um, our QT graph, which uh, bring this over here, and topics all. Let this load. Hit this. This will actually build a diagram of our complete running system. So we can see here. Um, we have a turtle uh, one slash topic. It's got a pose and a command velocity. Um, over here in the circle, we have draw square that's sending command velocities and taking in pose. And then we have the whole uh, turtle sim, which is uh, sending messages to the turtle's pose. Again, just a, a graphical representation. You can also see how this would be really, really handy if you're putting together, um, you know, either a talk for work or documentation uh, and demonstrating how a system's put together. So why don't we talk about ROS parameters? So uh, in ROS, parameters are values that are shared between nodes uh, in a system. Um, if you're familiar with sort of the Blackboard design pattern and software engineering, it, it's the same thing. Um, basically, any node uh, can have a set of parameters. They can be, and other nodes can query and write to them and, and change them around. Um, and they're generally fairly useful things. So if you've, um, if say you were building, just to make this concrete, say you were building a autonomous like shuttle bus for a campus, right? Um, and you wanted that vehicle to have a limitation on how fast it could go. And so there was some global parameter that you wanted to be maximum speed. That would be a great use case for a ROS parameter. So why don't we start by um, taking a look at, uh, basically what ROS params are out there. So we can do ROS2 param dash dash help and see what's there. And we see that we basically have four things we can do. We can delete a parameter, get a parameter, list a parameter, and set a parameter. So why don't we do ROS2 uh, param list dash dash help and see what we have. Uh, uh, so basically positional arguments, you can ask the uh, ROS2 uh, params to give you or, and a positional argument of a node name. So you can ask a particular node and see uh, what params it has if you want. Uh, so that's a good way to down select basically what parameters you're looking at, but you don't need that. So let's just do ROS param list. 
we see that turtle sim has four params, background B, background G, background R, and use sim time. So I imagine those background variables are basically just the background color of the turtle sim. So why don't we do uh, ROS2 param uh, get dash dash help and see if we can get some of these params. So to call this cur uh, call this, you just say ROS2 param get node name and name of the parameter. So node name is turtle sim and then one of these. So let's do ROS2 param get turtle sim and then background B underscore B. We see that it is 255 and if we get G it's 86 and if we get R it's 69. Cool and let's let's sanity check this. I would believe that's roughly this color. Um, so let's see if we can um, let's see if we can set this value. Uh, so ROS2 param set turtle sim. Oops, why don't we call help first to make sure. So ROS2 param set node name name value. So name is the name of the parameter and value is the value parameter. So why don't we do ROS2 just do tab up, make this get Turtle sim, and then uh, background B, and let's set that to zero. Oh, a slash. Let's fix that. There we go. There, parameter successful. Um, so we take a look here. We can. We'll notice that. The background hasn't changed and we actually have to do some stuff to make that happen but we'll we'll kind of get into that i'll show you how to do that so just take it on gospel that we've changed the parameter but we're not going to see it yet so why don't we talk about services um so uh first and foremost there's a full full length tutorial on raw services link to in the notes um Basically, a ROS2 service is um, is any sort of synchronous function call or RPC call that you'd like to do in your ROS system. Um, and at its core, uh, a service is just an API for creating tasks. Um, they usually speaking, these tasks, since they're synchronous, happen very quickly. So to make it concrete, in the case of an autonomous vehicle, like if you wanted to open uh, or lock or unlock the vehicle that would make a really good use case for a service. But the general rubric for what makes a good service is something that is short, quick, that you don't mind waiting for, that you can have done synchronously. Um, and calling a service or building a service is, is something similar to like building a REST API or like curling a REST API endpoint, where it's just this very simple thing that you just want to call, send it something, get something back, and, and that's about it. Um, so why don't we start pawing around in here. Let's take a look at the ROS2 service command. So ROS2 service dash dash help. We see that we get basically two, um, two different words we can use. We can either use call or a list. So why don't we dig down into list, ROS2 service list. And we see right now we have all of these services running. We have clear, kill, uh, reset, spawn, uh, set pin, teleport, and a couple others. Um, okay, so that's that's helpful. Um, let's let's um we, let's dig in a little bit more here. So if you recall from last time. Um, services, just like ROS topics, are built on these messages, and so the messages have a format where it's basically input, output, and that's what ROS uses to build all the serialization utilities um, 
between, like, say, different programming languages and different nodes. So generally, you're going to need to know the message format to call one of these services. So there's this dash T parameter in service list. So we can do ROS2 service list, nope, service list dash T. And you see it brought up um, all of the message types, which is good to know. So now we know that we can find these message types and we can get more information about them. Um, but we can also see some of these are, are empty. So why don't we try, um, uh, why don't we try calling an empty service? Um, oops. So why don't we call this uh, reset service that'll just reset the screen and this will actually uh, bring up our new color. So um, let's dig down into the service call API. So ROS2 service call dash dash help. And the format is service call, service name, service type values. Um, and so we already know that the, the service name is uh, up here, it's reset, and the type is empty, which doesn't require any uh, parameters. So what we should be able to do is ROS to service call slash reset, and then we can just uh, I like this. Control, right click, copy, and then Control Shift V. And let's see what happens. Okay, so something happened and making a request, and then we got a response, which is the empty response. And hopefully, let's see here. Cool. So it looks like our color got picked up. So um, remember, I killed all the blue. So this looks like a little off green, so I think that's all correct. Um, so let's uh, look again at our list of services here with their types. Um, if we wanted to do something more complex, like say call this service um, spawn, which has a type spawn, uh, which is a service that basically makes a new turtle, we need to know the message type to make this happen. So there's some tooling um, that we can use to do that. Um, so along with service, there's this analogous call. So ROS2 serve dash dash help. And what this does is it helps you find these service related messages. So um, you can list all of them. Uh, you can basically look through packages for them uh, and say which packages and figure out which packages contain which services and which messages they use and what the messages are. So why don't I show you how to use um, the show command here? So let's do ROS2 serve, SRV, show, dash dash help. And basically you just give it the message type. So let's do ROS2 serve, show. Oops, that's not the one we want. Let's go back up here. Oops, we need to get them again. Up, up. So, we'll copy this guy. Copy. Ross to serve show. And control shift V. Cool. So what we can see here is that the spawn message takes in uh, basically three float 32s. One is the X position, one is the Y position, um, one is the theta, which is just the global rotation, and then a name. And then after these three dashes, it returns a name. So why don't we, now that we know what this guy looks like, we should be able to construct a message to call the service. So I actually have this all here. So the, the, the formatting here is a little bit difficult. So this is YAML. I always get confused. I always get confused with Python, but it looks a lot like Python. Um, and I have this all set up. So why don't we use this to call and make three, uh, three new turtles. So we're gonna spawn three turtles. So we do ROS2 service call 
slash spawn, the message type, which is turtle sim serve spawn. And it's basically, uh, oops, this did not grab the whole thing. Cool. So we're going to create one called Larry. What am I missing here? Control C. There we go. And if everything went correctly, we should see Larry over here. Yes, that's Larry. Okay, I want to just a couple more times just to drive it home. So we'll make a new one at 111. And I don't know, we'll call this 3, 4.2. And we'll call this one Mo. And there's Mo. And um, let's make a curly. And we'll make this 2.2. And. put them at 3.3. Cool. There we go. Three turtles. Magic. Cool. All right. So now that we've covered actions, or sorry, covered services, why don't we talk about actions? So Ross actions um, are very, very similar to service uh, services in terms of what they do and what the API looks like. The, the big difference between an action and a service is that a uh, action is for any sort of task that's going to happen asynchronously. And so what I mean by asynchronously is like you're going to call it and then you're going to wait and you don't want your calling function to just sit there and wait forever. You want that function to get a callback basically when the thing is done. You may want to get um, an update or updates about the progression of the call to the action. And then you may also, another added feature is that you may want to be able to cancel uh, the action. Um, so generally we call these all asynchronous. Um, and actions are generally preferred over services in the sense that um, they just give you a lot more information, they give you a lot more function functionality, but they're a little bit more cumbersome to, to write. Um, the canonical sort of example for an action is, say, giving um, any sort of robot a waypoint where it's going to, like, have to go to a place far out um, and it's going to have to, like, try to traverse some sort of terrain to get there. And so in that case, right, you say, robot, I want you to go way over here. And the robot says, okay, I'm going to go over there. And then it, it basically, um, you know, starts going and that sends periodic updates and maybe something happens, it's taking too long, then you want to cancel. Actions will give you that cancel capability. Um, otherwise, you'll get all these updates, and then finally, when it reaches a goal, it'll send you a message that says, hey, I finally got your goal. So let's pull around inside of the action API. So we'll do ROS2 action uh, help and see what's in there. And we see we get info, list, send goal, and show. So why don't we do ROS2 action list and see what it says. Oops. Hush, help. <laughs> now we can see that help doesn't take it, or info doesn't take, or list doesn't take anything in, but it does have that handy dash T flag. So why don't we do ROS T, ROS to action list dash T. And we can see each of our turtles has a rotate absolute um, action associated with it, which is great. Um, so why don't we see if we can figure out how to, um, uh, how to call these actions and how to find out more about them. So we'll start with, um, list or start with info here. So why don't we start by just calling turtle one, Ross two action info.
And we'll start with help. Show types, count, and then the action name. So Ross2 action info. And we want turtle one. Oh, and that tab completes. Nice. And we'll, we'll add the dash T just to be a little extra. And we can see action. The first line up here is giving us the action name, the number of current clients. So this is important because actions can actually have multiple clients at the same time. Um, so things can get overloaded. So that's good to know. Uh, and there's one server and it is located at turtle sim and it uses a turtle sim action rotate absolute message. Okay. So why don't we figure out how we can call this guy? Um, so we can dig in by calling Ross to action um, send goal help <clears throat> and I misspelled this it's two words so send goal So there is positional arguments, action name, action type, goal, uh, name of the Ross action, type of the Ross action, and then the goal type. So let's, we'll construct this. And there's a dash F thing, so echo the feedback messages for the goal. Um, so there's one one thing we have to worry about, which is the um, we still don't know the message type for this uh, rotate absolute action message. So the way we do that is kind of similar to the the serve command, and the way we do uh, you know before if we wanted to know the service message we'd use ros2 serve ros2 actions have that built in, so we should be able to do something like ros2 action show and then our message type, uh, which is up here. I'll grab that, paste it. Cool. Now we can, we can read all about how our action uh, messages are constructed. So your call before, basically the first section up here is the goal, which is theta, the desired heading and radiance. Um, this is the final. Uh, this is return value. So this is a little bit tricky, um, but it's going to give the delta. So if your robot or if your turtle was like this initially and then it rotated 90 degrees like this, um, if you said rotate to 90, it would this would return 90 degrees. Um, and then finally up here, this is the definition of the um, update, which it's going to be the remaining values, to which is the remaining distance. Um, in radians, ugh, radians. Uh, so every time it updates and sends a new message about where it is, it's going to give you that radian. So basically, what's going to happen is we're going to say we're pointed this way. We want to go this way. Uh, circle, and what's going to happen is it's going to go cha chunk. You know, it's going to rotate a little bit, say 10 degrees or or 15 degrees or whatever, and it's going to say, well, I got this much farther to go. Uh, 90 minus 15, 90 minus 30, 90 minus 45. Um, and then finally it's going to get there and it's going to say, I rotated 90 degrees. And that's how this um, action is going to work. So let's see if we can construct this thing and see what it does. Um, so if we recall, just to refresh our mind, uh, ROS2 action send goal with underscores, dash dash help. <coughs> Uh, action name, action type, and the goal value as YAML, which I'm going to be lazy. I actually have this already over here. Um, so let's make our first turtle the one in the motorcycle. So why don't we make our um, make our middle turtle rotate to a theta of 1.7, which I don't even know quite what that is in this world, but let's take a look. So we'll send it. And we can see the feedback coming, the turtle rotating. 
Um, and then we finally got a goal message of succeeding. So you can see like, here's the initial goal, here's the update messages as they come down and it's kind of counting down. And then the delta is that this thing rotated negative 1.6 radians. Um, let's try that message again. Let's, uh, let's do a different turtle real quick. Um, let's try curly. Curly. Cool, he's pointed there. Uh, let's try sending Mo. And let's try sending Larry, just to get it all done. And I, I, I think the thing that's that's worth thinking about here is imagine that like you had an action running on your vehicle. You're trying to debug something and um, you wanted to say, hey, rotate the steering column to, you know, this heading or something like that, right? If you're sitting working on a vehicle trying to actually debug some sort of hardware problem and you wanted to check something out, this would be great, right? You can just call it from the command line and it move and you could actually get stuff done and you just kind of set it up. Okay, uh, so the last thing I want to talk about today really quickly is um, a ROS bag. And so we've already, I, I showed you a brief example, right, where we, we did the ROS topic echo and we basically dumped it to a CSV file or dumped it to a text file. Um, so ROS actually has this really, really nice built-in utility called a ROS bag. And the ROS bag is basically there for recording, replaying, um, data on a live system. Basically, once you've um, collected all your data into a ROS bag, it's just, it's like you've um, recorded an entire running system and you can replay it. And why that's really, really important is that, uh, sorry, it's a very nice day at the beach and everyone is driving their motorcycle out there. Uh, so your ROS bag is you want to take it and you basically have a whole system that you re can replay. This is phenomenal for testing and debugging, right? And what's really cool is that like um, you can, like the way I've used this in the past is like I have um, some sort of camera system that has a bunch of data and I just collect a whole bunch of data and then I'm working on an algorithm that's doing perception and I can just replay it, right? So I have like deterministic replaying. Um, which is super, super handy. Um, and the other thing is that you can basically like, um, you know, one of the things when you're doing robotics is that you want to create integration tests or sort of um, other kinds of tests where you're just testing the whole system. You can basically record all your data and replay it and like just have it all packaged and ready to go um, to test against, which is super handy. All right, so why don't we take a real quick look at this. Um, so ROS2 bag, dash help. And you can see we have three commands, record, play, and info. So before I record here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my turtle moving again, just so this is, um, so this is interesting. So, whoa. Start our turtle drawing. Let's make sure he's going. Cool. Oh, you see, he rotated. Now our, our square is a little bit off. Okay. So what we'll do here is let's let's record something first. So we'll do ROS2 bag record dash dash help. And basically all you do is you feed it topics, you can give it all. Um, there's a couple storage things that we aren't gonna really care about. So why don't we um, just go ahead and try to record the pose topic that we're drawing on right now. So what we'll do is uh, we'll do Ross to bag record. Turtle 
one. Now she pose. And we'll save this to my bag. So it's listening. Did I name that topic right? Let's check. So Ross to topic list. Uh, I'm just going to grab this for safety's sake. Copy. I'll do my bag to There it goes. It's subscribed. I'll let this guy go for a second. Let's let's have him do a whole square because we need a, we want like a couple seconds of data so we can see what's going on. So I'm gonna let him go do a full square. Um, yeah. As I said before, this is like the root of ROS testing. It's ROS bags are also a great way to distribute data. We've actually had people publish papers and they and data sets particularly perception related data sets and they just bag the whole thing and like have little labeled bag sections and um, they distribute them. There's actually just recently came out a really great Python um, API for digging into bag files. So if you want to go capture a bunch of stuff on a running system um, that's maybe all C++ and then you want to go like pull it apart and look at the goo inside and you know kind of do some prototyping in Python and like a notebook, that's totally something you can do now and it's super handy. Okay, so I'm going to kill this with control C um, and let's look around here. So, <clears throat> so what we can see is there's now, um, what do I call this thing? My bag two. We can now see that there is a directory called my bag two. And let's go, go into that directory and look around. And we can see there's a YAML file and a database file. Let's take a look. Anything interesting? Okay. Um, so if we do ROS2 bag info dash dash help, this should give us some information about what's in our bag file. So if you come across the bag file, you don't, somebody maybe recorded something just for debugging purposes, you want to see what's in there, what you can do is ROS2 bag info uh, my bag to. There we go. Got to do it in the correct directory. All right. So we can see that the file is called my bag DB3. Um, it's 250 kilobytes. It's one minute long. It was recorded on such and such a date. It's got these messages and a couple other things to type and serialization, blah, 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 blah. So let's, let's replay this bag and then I'll show you how to dig in and see what's inside of the bag. So what I'm going to do real quick just to show you that there's nothing up my sleeves is um, we'll go back and let's kill this draw square and then we'll kill our turtle. And um, what we can basically do is one ROS bag play. So let's take a look at the command really quick. So ROS2 bag play my bag or sorry dash dash help. Yep and you just give it the file. There is this read ahead queue size which is probably helpful because these bag files can get pretty big and they can be moving uh, a lot of data. So let's do ROS2 bag play um, my bag to Now we can see it's opening, and what we can do is um, ROS topic list, or sorry, ROS to topic list, and we can see all of our topics, and we can do ROS to topic echo. Turtle pose. 
We can see it's moving around just like it was before. Um, and eventually it's going to stop because we only recorded about a minute of data. And it's probably the last turn. Well, my thing may be playing. But anyway, what you can see is, oh, see there it finished. So let's go back over here. Yeah, you see it stopped. Um, well, what's interesting about this is that that bag replaying is basically emulating our, our full system. And you can just like loop it or splice them together and do all these sort of crazy things. But it's a really, really helpful tool for like debugging and um, development as well. So you should be aware of it. Okay, so let's go to the last slide here. Uh, homework. So TurtleBot and TurtleSim, um, they come from a long line of turtle-based tutorials in software engineering. Um, so the logo programming language is actually where a lot of this turtle stuff comes from. And you basically, um, open this up. So it was a programming language in the 60s. Um, and there was turtle graphics and turtle graphics uh, were basically this way that like you take a screen or take a cursor on a screen and you could say go forward turn right turn left go forward and you could draw really really cool stuff and so if you're a child of the late 70s early 80s you may have played with this um to do some basic drawing i have an example here um something like this where your little turtle goes around in circles and you you had it draw images. This is what passed for high-tech computer graphics in the 70s and 80s. Um, so my suggestion here for homework is to um, is to try and take some of these tools and try to take this turtle sim and build out some sort of interesting uh, turtle drawing algorithm. Uh, so let me here, let me uh, switch over screens real quick. Cool. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, third lecture. Um, and I, I know it was a lot to take in really, really quickly. And it's a really um, hands-on quick dive into software engineering and, and ROS2 fundamentals in CI. Um, I would highly recommend you sort of uh, continue practicing and looking around and, and trying to understand how these things work. The more you play with them, the more you get you the more you actually apply them, the more familiar they're going to seem, and the easier it'll be to understand um, more complex topics. Um, so the next lecture, which should come out next week, and they're basically going to talk about the hardware platforms for autonomous vehicles, which includes things like um, ECUs, RTOS, um, also DDS systems, and it should be a really, really informative talk. It's basically at this very nice bridge between hardware and software. Um, so I think that should be very, very interesting. Um, I hope you had fun. Let me know if you have any questions. We're always available, uh, as I said, at answers.ros.org or discourse.ros.org. Um, and yeah, have fun.